Wildlife well, photography can be challenging, but fulfilling as well, and permits wow. you to stay in contact with nature. I'm Giuseppe Gessa, an Italian wildlife and nature photographer, and in today's video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to get started with wildlife photography. But before, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to allow the notification bell in order to not lose my new video. So, are you ready? Okay, let's go. Hello everybody and welcome back. In this video I'm gonna show you how to start with wildlife photography. I'm assuming you already have got a camera with a lens, but don't worry, I'm gonna tell you something about a uh, bugger you need. Wildlife is one of many aspects of nature, one of the most interesting in my opinion. On YouTube there are plenty of channels about wildlife photography, like mine, and everyone has their personal motivation. So the first question you have to ask to yourself is why wildlife photography? Why am I attracted from wildlife? Is it only for taking beautiful pictures, maybe to show in some social media? Am I interested in wildlife behavior? As I said, everybody has their personal motivation. Mine is pretty simple. I love nature, I love wildlife, and my main aim is to stay in contact with nature as much as possible. Taking wildlife feature is the last step of a long process that teaches me a lot of information and feelings as well. Indeed, when I'm in nature, I feel good. I wouldn't get back home. Seeing and understanding animals in their own natural environment is priceless. And tell me that we are nature. We are a part of nature and we should live all together with respect. Wildlife is everywhere, really everywhere in city as well as in your own garden. Big or small, doesn't matter. For sure, there will be our life somewhere. So, another important aspect, if you want to start to photograph our life, is to understand where you can find it. My best tip is to go around your outskirts city or village looking for the countryside. In those places, will be super easy to find an animal. Birds, foxes, weasels, deer. Of course, it depends on the area where you are living. So, another tip might be to check on the net or in some book. What kind of animals live in your area? Because you'll get a better idea of what you can get. And don't forget to check the city garden. Really, often in public garden live many, many animals, like some common birds and squirrels as well. But they are really cute. And if you are lucky, during the night, you'll be able to hear and see some owl, like the scoop owl. Unfortunately, wildlife photography might be super expensive uh, and you could give up because of the high cost of a good camera or lens as well. But nothing's lost. Regardless of the brand, you can find cheaper gear to start. It's not mandatory buying the last flagship camera or a super telephoto prime lens. Often there are better options, often really cheap for a wildlife photographer. I made a different video about the best camera and lenses for wildlife photography. But I can tell you, with a small mirrorless camera and a zoom telephoto lens, you can start without problem. I'm a Sony user, so I know pretty well Sony stuff. And a good example is the Sony Alpha 6400 with a Tamron 150-500mm lens, a good match to start. Then, in many situations, you can buy used gear, saving a lot of money. In that case, it should be better check some specific forum or better ask to your local shops if they have got use stuff. A study track would close the mandatory gear list. And the final point is study your gear. Yes, there is no point having the last super camera and not knowing how to use it. So study the user manual user manual and make practice. Practice practice. The free fees. Okay, this is an important aspect of wildlife photography. Maybe the most important. How can you photograph wildlife if you don't know what kind of animal there are in your area? After having understood where you can find animals, it's time to understand what kind of animal you can get, because now it's time to study them. My favorite source is internet, as well as some specific book, mostly for birds. Once I find an interesting species, I start to follow it using my binoculars in order to see where it goes, where it stays, what it eats, and so Depending on the species, I can decide if to use a portable photo blind or if I can to build a permanent photo blind. But in many cases, I can use my car as well, like a photo blind. Anyway, this part is crucial and staying far is the key for not scaring animals 
I'll never tell you to tell you to respect wildlife. So be careful and keep the right distance from your target. If they see you as a danger, they will stay far or worse, they'll go away. At this stage, use a binocular or a spotting scope is the best solution for studying your subject. Another good information source are other photographers. So if you know someone, try to ask them. Oh, me? Yes, if I can, I'll respond of all your requests. You can write them in the comment section below or you can contact me using the email of the channel. As I said in the previous point, to respect wildlife is mandatory. There is no point getting wildlife in trouble, at least in my opinion. You have to remind that we are part of nature and we should live respecting each other, animal included. Our presence in the field should be as little invasive as possible. Even noises are annoying for wildlife and when we walk somewhere we make noises with our feet or our gear so we should try to minimize them another aspect is baiting in theory wildlife is self-sufficient so they don't need our food mostly for our photos i know sometimes i use some seed for attracting birds like the woodpecker but only for a really short period just during the photography session to be clear, baiting isn't always bad because in some situations, like in winter, many animals suffer food lack and many local animal associations tell us that small biting is possible, but only for really short period and only for animals in trouble. Be careful, using biting for a long period can get wildlife used to it and they might, might stop to hunt or to become addicted to our food and this is wrong. In all my videos, you see me waiting for a long time, sometimes. I don't get any pictures of my subject, but day after day you have the right chance to achieve your picture. So please be patient. After all, with your subject you'll be able to admire nature around you and that can't be bad for everybody. In one of my last wildlife adventures, when I photographed the golden eagle, I had the chance to get some beautiful pictures of jays and lizards just when I was waiting for the eagle, because I was paying attention about what was happening around me. Ok my friends, for today's all, I hope this is an interesting topic for you and I'm always ready to help everybody with everything. As I said, if you have some questions, write them in the comment section below. I'll be really glad to answer. Ok, it's time to say goodbye. Take care, see you in the next video. Bye bye.